Hey, how are you guys? It is Harrison Barron from growth-generators.com. Now in this video, I want to talk about a post that I saw online and it is, I am tired of sales throwing us under the bus for impossible claims. And this is basically a prime example of sales overselling support and then support having to try to deliver and it always flops. They under deliver because they can't make the possible claim that the salesperson did. This video is definitely geared towards at least a handful of employees or if you have a salesperson, but nonetheless, it is going to be a fantastic video because I have personally dealt with this and we're gonna dive in right now. Before I get into it, I do wanna invite you to check out my masterclass down below if you are interested in learning all of the sales strategies, techniques, closing, all of it. Everything that I've learned in my entire sales career, I am putting together in an online course. It will be launching right around August 1st. Link is down below for the wait list. And if you're curious, I do have a masterclass, five free ways. It is completely free. There is no sales pitch in there. If you want to book a discovery call at the end, you are welcome to. It is totally free down below. It'll make you drastically more money. But if you are dealing with a salesperson that is consistently over and over and over again, over promising so the team can't meet those demands, I have just the solution for you. And this is going to hurt some people's feelings. There is a massive separation in two categories. Number one, the business owner to the sales person and the sales team having a massive misunderstanding from the IT side of it, the, the support team that is going to do it. Now, I have personally dealt with both of these and I'm gonna tell you the best solution that I could ever possibly think of that will help you come up with a much better structure, help that salesperson stop over promising things that the team can't deliver and make everyone's life significantly more stress free. So in my experience, I have had to deal with an old boss who made impossible claims and I had to be the bigger person that went out and was like, dude, we can't deliver that. I came from the tech side of it. I started out as an unpaid intern and then became a salesperson, worked my way through the ranks. The problem is, is there is a massive separation in the team and the salesperson is so focused on revenue and the massive separation number one is the pay that the salesperson is getting. If you're getting a salesperson that is consistently over promising what the team can do, it is because they are so hungry for money because they're not making enough. It is a crazy concept, I know, but if a, if a salesperson is fairly compensated, meaning they have a, a healthy base plus a lot of room for commission, that's a good thing. But if you pay a salesperson, shekels and expect them to produce, they are going to sell everything because they want the commission. They are terrified to walk away from a deal that would net them thousands of dollars. So how do you fix all of this, right? We've already talked about the salary. The second thing is educate, educate, educate. I will beat the word educate into the ground at the end of every single video for the rest of my life to help it stick. There is a serious, serious problem between what the salesperson knows and what the IT team can do. The best way to resolve this is actually having the salesperson become a basic level tech. Now they don't need to get their A plus certification. They don't need to do anything else, but what they should be doing is taking some kind of calls. And it is literally the definition of kind of like that un undercover boss. While they're not the boss, they need to go out and see what the team does and how they do it and what is actually reasonable. Because if they're competing with other people that are promising and over delivering or under delivering, that's a massive problem. A salesperson needs to understand what the team can do and be compensated fairly enough to be able to say, hey, that's impossible or our team cannot handle that and have the comfortability to walk away from a deal that isn't good for them and isn't good for the company. Because if that salesperson promises the world and the team doesn't deliver, that is a recipe for bad reviews, negative clout, the whole nine. And I did just say the word clout, but you don't want that to happen. It is a massive, massive problem. The other problem is the communication between that salesperson and the IT team or the project manager that's going to be there. Now, when I was doing sales, specifically for an MSP, what I realized is the team is great, 
the project manager is better. And after I would go into a sale call or a meeting, I would go through and say, hey, this is what they're looking for. If they signed up at the end of business today, what is a realistic time frame to do everything A to Z? And can we do everything A to Z? And let the project manager know, because it's not about over-promising and under-delivering. It's about setting realistic expectations for clients. And that's the main difference. Clients don't mind waiting for things as long as they know when it's going to happen. If you have arm pain, you don't want to say, I'm stuck with arm pain for the rest of my life. You make an appointment. You don't care if that appointment is in one week or two weeks, obviously, depending on the pain level. But if you're in serious pain, right, there's always emergency rooms. But if you're in serious pain, one, you can usually jack up the price. But two, having that IT team be removed from one project to go take care of that crisis, assuming the customer wants to pay for it, is totally fine. But the customer needs to know when the remedy is coming, just like you know when your doctor's appointment is coming for your, the pain in your arm. The time doesn't matter. You might know it's a weekend. You might want it to go away sooner. The business owner, I'm sure, wants it to be resolved sooner, right? And they're willing to move forward with it. But in order to make everybody happy, management, business owner, salesperson, and the IT team, the salesperson and the project manager or the IT team need to consistently be talking about what's coming up, when do we have days that we could do certain things, whether that's projects, upgrades, removals, whatever it may be, and that communication needs to happen, but it comes down to education on all areas. The business owner, understanding that either they have a salesperson or what they're capable of as far as a tech team, because the business owner is not the one doing most of the work. It's the tech team doing most of the work. They're the workhorses. They are the greatest thing. They are the engine that keeps the machine running. They're the greatest thing since sliced bread. The salesperson, if they're consistently doing this and you've educated them, they have the ability to talk to them over and over and over again, I hate to say it, kick them to the side because they're only going to harm your company more and more in hunger of paychecks. Or you need to look at it and say, hey, why do you keep doing this? There has to be an underlying reason. Nine times out of 10, it is because they are getting paid shekels and they are expected to produce a astronomical amount of revenue for the company that is completely unrealistic. And the only way they can hit those goals is specifically over promising. And then the team has to try to meet the, the deliverabilities. It's just it. I get super passionate about this because I had to deal with this for forever with my old boss. Now I'm not going to say which one it is, but it's such a nightmare because I go in, Hey, so-and-so told me you guys can do it that way. I talk to the project manager and the team and say, Hey, is this even realistic in the time frame that they're looking for? Most of the time it's not. I have stayed up all night long in customer shops, helping the IT team do whatever it is so I could help meet the deliverabilities promised by somebody else. It is a literal nightmare. Nightmare fuel, as they call it. It's the simplest way to do this. Understand the capabilities of your team, of management, of the entire company, and sell to those deliverabilities. And if you have a red hot deal that you're like, this is thousands and thousands or tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue in the business go meet with the team and say look can we get this done in a time frame that fits the customer's needs yes or no and if we can great if we can't is there something else that we can move that we can now insert that project into to close that deal sooner because if it takes too long customers going to leave but customers aren't calling or potential customers aren't calling 35 IT guys and they're not lining up in a row to make sales. You usually have a couple day window that you could still get in there. It is not a long conversation. It is as soon as that conversation ends. If you know it is a red flag, this is a red hot deal. We need to get it. So we need to get it fixed or I want to earn that commission and that deal. Go back to the team. Let them know what is entailed. Take a million and one pictures. Give them the recipe. Educate the salesperson to give the project manager and the team enough information that they can say, hey, we can get this done next week. We can get this done tomorrow, whatever that time frame looks like. But it comes down thoroughly to educating, educating the salesperson and educating the team of what's going to be happening and what we need to do in order to effectively close that deal. Because trust me, 
after doing this, the team wants you to close business because when you as the salesperson, whether or not you're the business owner or the salesperson closes more business, they know that there's raises on the table, that they can actually go earn more money because the company is making more money. That's the recipe. I had the best, most supportive team ever, but it took a lot of education. It took sales training. It took trial and error. It took a lot of sitting down. It took nights at my firehouse. It took talking to other leaders of what the problems were. And nine times out of 10, it is thoroughly education or that salesperson not making enough money that they feel like they consistently have to overpromise everything, promise the stars and all to close that deal so they can live the lifestyle that they want to live. That's almost always the problem. If you find this problem and I didn't cover it in this video, leave a comment down below. I definitely want to help you out. Other than that, check the links, free masterclass, waitlist for the course. If you're interested on that, love you guys. See you guys later.